Hi everyone, my name is Carlos. I'm a web developer based in Brooklyn, New York. And today I want to talk about Markdown. What is Markdown? Why do we use it? And how does it actually work? So let's go ahead and jump right in. So what exactly is Markdown? Why do we use it? And how do we use it? Well, in simple terms, Markdown is a text to HTML conversion tool for web writers. So Markdown allows us to write using an easy to read, easy to write plain text format, and then convert it structurally to valid HTML. With this definition, Markdown is essentially two things. One, it's a plain text formatting syntax, and two, it's a software tool that was written in Perl that converts plain text formatting to HTML. The overall design goal for Markdown's formatting syntax is to make it as readable as possible. So that allows us to create text that looks like this and transform it into this kind of output. Now, many of us have used different tools that allows us to format text in various different ways. So Microsoft Word is a great example for that. Let's look at how I would write some simple content using Microsoft Word. Now, Microsoft Word is very useful in providing us with various tools to actually format and edit our text. But a lot of times it may be overdoing it. Perhaps you just want to bold some text or make a simple list. And maybe you don't even want to open Microsoft Word to format a text that you're going to send as an email. Another tool that's used a lot, and it's the way web pages and email templates are coded so that text is formatted, is HTML. So let's see how we would write the same content using HTML. Now, HTML is pretty much used everywhere in the internet. It's also more expressive and can actually achieve some specific effects that may be difficult or impossible in Markdown. However, there's a learning curve to HTML. And similarly to Microsoft Word, its benefits really depend on what you're using it for. You can see in this example, you have to actually keep into account the various different tags that HTML provides and make sure that they're all being closed properly. Now, this might be easy if you're experienced, but if you're a beginner and you just want to format a text like an email or certain documentation, it might be overboard and unnecessary to learn. So let's see how we would write the content from the previous two examples using Markdown. As you can see, Markdown syntax is comprised entirely of punctuation characters which have been chosen carefully to look like what they mean. So asterisks around the word kind of represent emphasis, which bolds the text. Markdown lists look like, well, lists. Now, Markdown is not a replacement for HTML or even close to it. Its syntax is very small, and it only corresponds to a very small subset of HTML tags. But the idea is not to create a syntax that makes it easier to insert HTML tags. The idea for Markdown is to make it easy to read, write, and edit prose. Due to this, Markdown's formatting syntax only addresses issues that can be conveyed in a plain text. So let's take a look at how we actually use Markdown to format and edit our text. For headings, we usually use a hashtag to represent what kind of heading we're going to be using. To create a heading, we usually add a hash in front of a word or phrase, and the number of hashes you use should correspond to the heading level. So if we want to create a heading level 3, we use 3 hashes. For different types of emphasis, we use other punctuation marks. If you want to italicize your text, you simply add an asterisk before and after the word. In order to bolden it, you add two asterisks before and after the word. And if you want to have some strike through text, you simply wrap the text in tildes. For list items, we also have quite simple syntax we can use. To create an unordered list, you're given the option of using dashes, asterisk, or plus signs to put them in front of line items, and this will create a bulleted list. For ordered list, all we need to do is simply add line items with numbers followed by periods. Now the numbers don't have to be in numerical order, but the list should start with a number one, and this would create a numbered list. So now that we have an idea of how Markdown is composed, let's dig in a little deeper and figure out how exactly it works. Now Markdown is basically plain text, so it can be used pretty much anywhere. But in this case, let's assume you wrote a file that has some Markdown syntax. From there, you're going to make sure that you save it with an extension called .markdown or .md. Going from there, once you have your Markdown file, from there, you actually need a Markdown application that's capable of processing the Markdown file. Now, Markdown applications use something called a Markdown processor, also commonly referred to as a parser or an implementation, that basically take the Markdown formatted text and now put it to HTML format. Now, at that point, your document can be viewed in a web browser or combined with a style sheet and printed. And if you simply want to just experiment with Markdown, there's a bunch of uh, Markdown editors online that you can simply look up and use Markdown with. So why should we use Markdown? Well, there are a few reasons for that. One of them is accessibility. 
Markdown is very accessible to someone who doesn't know the first thing about HTML. So let's look at an example where HTML can get quite nested and complex. As you can see here, there's a lot of boilerplate that we actually have to create before we even start writing the content of our text using HTML. Moreover, if we have a lot of content, it can get quite nested and can be very hard to read, especially if you're not really familiar with HTML. This leaves us with a lot of room for error. HTML basically begs for typos, so even the smallest typo or mistake can completely alter and change the way our content looks. One of the other reasons we should use Markdown is that due to the way it's written, we can pretty much use it everywhere. For example, it's used widely in software documentation, particularly open source, because it enables richer formatting than plain text alone. Certain applications also support Markdown, so you can even format your text as Markdown within the application itself. Markdown has become so popular and common that even applications that you probably are familiar with use Markdown themselves. It's become the default or the standard for formatting certain types of text. So let's look in a few more examples as to where exactly Markdown is applicable. For starters, we can use it on websites. Markdown was designed for the web, so it should come as no surprise that there are plenty of applications specifically designed for creating website content. Now, although there are limitations for Markdown, if you're intending to write something with straightforward text like a blog, then Markdown might save you some time. Now, while Markdown doesn't have all the bells and whistles of word processors like Microsoft Word, it's very useful to creating documents and notes, and it's still very readable that you can actually copy and paste it elsewhere and still be able to format it as Markdown. Now, if you send a lot of emails and you're tired of the formatting controls available on most email provider websites, you'll be happy to know that there's a bunch of tools online that allow you to actually implement Markdown inside your email, making it very easy and readable to send emails with formatted text. Lastly, Markdown is a natural fit for technical documentation. Companies like GitHub are increasingly switching to Markdown for their documentation due to its ease of writing and reading the actual documents. So hopefully this video gave you a better understanding of what is Markdown and how it's actually used. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Join the conversation by subscribing to this channel or dropping a comment below. And if you want to take your skills to the next level, start learning on Codecademy today.